Millions of people around the world use mouthwash, and they use it for a wide variety of reasons, ranging from improving dental health to simply getting fresher smelling breath. Today we'll be tackling the question, should you even use mouthwash in the first place? Is it beneficial to you? Are there negative consequences to using it? Well, like most questions, the answer is somewhat complicated. First of all, if you're using mouthwash at all, unless it's for a very specific purpose, then it should not replace your regular toothbrushing and flossing activities. Now, there are two main types of mouthwashes, therapeutic and cosmetic. Therapeutic rinses are typically used to address a specific problem, and they're often prescribed by doctors or they can be bought off the shelf. These can have active ingredients to help kill bacteria and reduce things like plaque, gingivitis, cavities, bad breath, etc. Others can help keep your mouth clean after receiving oral surgery procedures like tooth extraction or the like when you can't perform regular toothbrushing. Additionally, some can act as saliva substitutes for people who have trouble producing saliva or are experiencing dry mouth and the like. These are all useful for helping treat different medical conditions, and if a doctor has told you to use it, then you almost certainly should use it. However, the vast majority of mouthwash products used are cosmetic mouthwashes. These are primarily commercial antiseptics that are used to help control or reduce bad breath and supposedly improve oral health. It's generally agreed there's very little evidence that regular use of cosmetic mouthwashes improves people's dental health, and the American Dental Association has stated that regular brushing and proper flossing are enough in most people. So if there's relatively little reason to use it, why is it so popular? A study in Scotland found that 25% of adults there use mouthwash daily. Of course, the answer to this is advertising, as companies will pay absolutely huge amounts of money so people can see ads like these. And kills up to 99.9% .9 of bad bacteria. It penetrates plaque deeper than any other everyday use mouthwash, so there's nowhere for bacteria to hide. There's no deeper clean than Listerine. So while there's no real medical necessity to actually using cosmetic mouthwashes, there are some positives, right? Like fresher smelling breath and the like. However, there are also a large number of negatives that you really should think about before you use them. The overwhelming majority of negatives are associated with the alcohol that the majority of cosmetic mouthwashes contain. For example, the original formula Listerine has a 26.9% alcohol content, and this is really especially large when you compare it to things like beer, which is typically between 3-7% alcohol, and wine at 12%. The function of the alcohol in the mouthwash is to act as a binder for a lot of the other ingredients, as well as to directly kill bacteria in your mouth. The problem is this also has a host of negative effects, such as wrecking your oral microbiome. Now, of course it kills a lot of negative bacteria, but it also kills a lot of the good bacteria in your mouth that your body actually needs, much like taking a unnecessarily large dose of antibiotics when you're not sick. It can also dry out your mouth even more, and if you have naturally dry mouth, then it's probably just going to make it even worse. The primary risk is potentially increasing your risk towards oral cancer. Now, additionally, there have been some popular media stories of using mouthwash and its relationship to cancer risk, but it's a lot more muddled than that. Consumption of alcohol is something that has been concretely and definitively linked to developing cancer, with 3.6% of all worldwide cases being attributable to the consumption of alcohol. After being consumed, the ethanol is broken down by your liver into acetaldehyde, which the International Agency for Research on Cancer has listed as a Group 1 carcinogen. So if acetaldehyde is produced in your liver and you're not drinking the mouthwash, or at least I really hope you're not drinking it, then how does it present a cancer risk? While the majority of acetaldehyde is produced in your liver, there is evidence to suggest that it's synthesized by the various enzymes and oral bacteria in your mouth, even when you just have your alcohol in your mouth and you're not swallowing any of it. It's also important to remember that even if you're not directly consuming the alcohol, the alcohol content in mouthwash is quite high in comparison to most drinks, and you're going to be holding it in your mouth for an extended period of time, unlike when you're simply socially drinking and it just goes right down into your stomach. There's a very good study on this from 2008 that was published in the Australian Dental Journal. It's a very high quality study that was peer reviewed and had over 3,000 patients that were tracked and they accounted for both tobacco and alcohol consumption as factors. If you're interested in it, I have a link to it in the description down below. They found that for people who used mouthwash daily that didn't have any additional risk factors, they did have a statistically elevated possibility of getting oral cancer, but there likely still needs to be a larger sample size. 
However, for those who were already regularly smoking, in addition to using mouthwash regularly, they had a staggering nine times increase in the possibility of getting oral cancer, and there was a five times increase for people who are consistent alcohol consumers. This is a case where multiple risk factors combined uh, increase their possibility of actually getting cancer. Now, this is just one study, and we probably need a lot more research before making a definitive claim such as mouthwash causes oral cancer. And even barring this, there are also some more common side effects of mouthwashes, such as taste disturbance, tooth staining, sensation of a dry mouth, etc. It pretty clearly shows there are a lot of clear negatives and few positives to using cosmetic mouthwashes. However, this doesn't mean that mouthwashes are useless and you shouldn't use them. Completely far from it. The study earlier mentions that it might be more useful if they were prescribed by doctors like any other medication. And also, there are a lot of brands now of non-alcoholic mouthwashes that are also a potential option you can use as well, if you want to say freshen your breath or whiten your teeth. So to conclude then, should you use mouthwash? Well, if it's just for bad breath, then probably not. Just brushing and flossing properly is almost certainly a better idea to deal with it. However, if it's been prescribed by a doctor for a specific reason, like you just had oral surgery done and you can't actually brush your teeth, or it's to treat some other condition, then go ahead and use it like any other type of medication. Basically, do some research on the product you're using, and don't use it for no good reason. Thank you guys so much for watching my video. If you liked it, uh, feel free to hit that like button, and if you want to see more videos like this as I make them, then hit that subscribe button, and you will see more of these videos for your viewing pleasure and information. Anyways, enjoy your day.